This week I built this modular slash mobile miter saw station with plenty of storage, work stops, and this fold out wing. This video is sponsored by Craig and you can find a full build article with cut list on their website, buildsomething.com. As I continue to organize my shop, I prioritize maximizing the small amount of space that I have. I got rid of my old miter saw station that was unnecessarily large, and I designed this new version that can roll anywhere in my shop and works with my workbench to cut longer material. So far you've seen me cutting down the sheets of 3 quarter inch Baltic birch that I'm using for this project into the panels I need to assemble the two cabinets. Let's jump into SketchUp real quick so I can give you a better visual of what I'm doing here. The miter cabinet and the stationary cabinet are formed with these side panels attached to these bottom panels. And then these upper stretchers provide support to which I'll mount the tabletops to later. I'm building this miter saw station to work with this Metabo HPT miter saw I just picked up and it runs both off of corded power and works with a battery. So when the miter cabinet is sitting next to the stationary cabinet I can plug it in but when I roll it over to the workbench to cut longer pieces I can just pop in a battery and run it off of that. Just like my workbench, this whole build is put together using Craig pocket hole joinery and I really think this is the best and quickest way to build shop furniture and I don't mind if some of the pocket holes show on the finished piece. To start the assembly, I attach the bottom panel that gets all the pocket holes to one of the side panels of the miter cabinet. I also like to use these corner clamps I picked up from Rockler to keep everything square as I move through the assembly. Moving on to the center divider and the bottom of the drawer box of the miter cabinet, I attach these two panels together to form a T. It also helps if you clamp your work pieces together when driving in pocket holes because they have a tendency to shift around otherwise. With the miter cabinet done, I moved on to the stationary cabinet, and here's another sketch to show you what I'm doing. And again, it's just a matter of attaching the bottom panels to the cabinet sides and finishing with the upper supports. These panels go together pretty quickly once you get all the panels cut, and the next day I can move on to start making the drawers. I'm using half inch Baltic birch for the drawers and I cut this panel in half with my Craig AccuCut and then finished ripping all the panels I need for the five drawers over on the table saw. Next I cut the pieces of the length over on the miter saw and if you watched my workbench video a few weeks ago you saw how I used pocket holes to assemble my drawers. I'm using this exact same method here for this project. And again, these corner clamps are clutch for keeping these drawers square as I assemble. With the drawers put together, I cut down some quarter inch Baltic birch plywood and these will create the drawer bottoms. These get attached to the drawers first with some brad nails and then I came back and secured it with screws. Moving on to the drawer slides, I'm using these 18 inch full extension slides I got on Amazon. I'll leave a link for these and everything else I use in this build down below, but these are super easy to install. I use the spacer for the bottom drawer and then I use the Craig drawer slide jig for the rest. Now I can attach the other half of the slides to the drawers and the drawers are done and ready to insert into the cabinet. The stationary cabinet gets leveling feet, so I drill out this hole to insert a T-nut on the four bottom corners. I cut down some more 3 quarter inch plywood to create the drawer fronts and the cabinet doors, and I made sure to stick with a continuous grain pattern across the drawers. A little trick I like to use for installing drawer fronts is adding a few dabs of hot glue, getting my spacing, and letting the glue dry before securing the fronts with a couple screws. I'm using these Euro style hinges on the doors and to install them I'm using the Craig concealed hinge jig. A straight edge and a self-centering bit are great at keeping the hinges aligned during installation. I marked out the location for the cabinet sides of the hinge and attached them with a few screws and then the doors just snap in place. The nice thing about these hinges is that they have a lot of adjustment to even up any gaps. Yeah. 
I picked up this set of heavy duty four inch casters with brakes and all four wheels because I'm gonna be rolling this cabin around the shop often. I'm using quarter 20 bolts to attach and you can see here how I first drilled a pilot hole before using a Forstner bit to drill out a recess for the bolt to sit down in. Now I'll build the fold-up arm, or the wing as I like to call it. Mine is modeled after a miter saw station on the Olari's YouTube channel, so make sure to check that video out as well. I'll drop a link down below. I'm assembling with pocket holes in the middle supports where it attaches to the top piece so there won't be any screws visible and there's nothing able to snag on a workpiece. After that, I added this bottom panel and the back fence to the support wing using glue and screws. For the fence on top of the stationary cabinet, I'm using two six inch wide panels together, but I added pocket holes before this glue up so I could attach the vertical piece that makes up the front fence. And speaking of this fence, I added a 45 degree chamfer so the sawdust won't interfere with cuts when I'm using the miter saw. I glued on the tabletop pieces to both cabinets and then I made this quick jig to help me align the support block the wing gets attached to. Once the support block is attached with glue and screws, I propped up the wing on the block and added a scrap piece for temporary support while I clamped the wing to that block. I used a pair of four inch door hinges to attach the wing because I wanted something durable and I feel like this is going to stay aligned to the tabletop over time. I marked the placement of the board I'm using for the fold out wing support and cut this on my bandsaw. I drilled this half inch hole and off camera I added an oak dowel that's cut to fit underneath the wing. I attached a piano hinge to the fold-out support, set the spacing, and then the whole assembly gets attached to the side of the miter cabinet with screws. I also made this little stop block for the support by drilling a hole with the Forstner bit and then cutting that block in half. The fence needs to be perfectly aligned to the miter saw, so I used a straight edge to line it up before attaching to the stationary cabinet with screws from underneath. I'm using this Craig track system to set up stop blocks and make repeatable cuts when I'm using the miter saw. These tracks are aluminum and they're really easy to install. You just drill out some holes and then attach with screws from the back side of the fence. All right, now we're in the home stretch with this miter saw station and I ripped these strips down to serve as the drawer pulls and door handles that have a 45 degree bevel. I marked their length for each drawer and then cut them the size on the miter saw. I used the Craig shelf pin jig to add these adjustable shelves, which I cut to fit on the table saw. I used some more quarter inch Baltic birch to create the two back panels for each cabinet and screwed them in place. Just like I did with the workbench, I'm using Total Boat's elixir paints for the drawer pulls and the handles. I think shop furniture doesn't have to be boring and I like having a colorful space to work in. There are a million different ways to create drawer pulls if you wanted to build this project yourself, but maybe you don't like the colors or the style that I went with. To get everything ready for finish, I removed the miter saw and the track system and gave the whole piece a sanding up to 220 grit. Again, just like my workbench, I'm using Total Boat's Gleam Spar Varnish and I applied four coats to build up an extra durable finish. And with that, this modular mobile miter saw station is finished. The combination of space saving design, the storage, and the modular functionality are exactly what I need for my shop to get better organized and streamline my workflow. 
The cabinet rolls easily over to my workbench to cut longer boards, and the Craig Precision Track System makes repeatable cuts a breeze. I'm loving having all the extra storage, but doing so with smaller drawers that don't allow me to pile large amounts of tools and junk into a drawer where I'll never find anything. I'd like to thank Craig for sponsoring this project, and I have a whole build article up on their website, buildsomething.com, that has cut list and step-by-step -step directions along with a SketchUp file all linked down below. I'd also like to take a second to thank all my Patreon supporters, especially my top patrons, David Britton, Matt Varighese, DFM Toolworks, and Jenny and Davis. Patreon members get access to special rewards and sneak peeks for going that extra mile to support this show. There's information down below if you're interested. Okay, thanks everyone for watching this project. Let me know down in the comments below if you want to see me do more shop projects, as I do have a few more in mind. All right, thanks, and I'll see you back here next time.